on, Dan. Go on, Dan. You have to. You have to fucking buy some. <laughs> Good morning. The Thames trip has started. We've driven an hour out from Berkshire to the source of the Thames. And here it is. Well, it's not the source, but the start of the Thames. So for the next seven days, we'll be paddling down. So yeah, join us on this epic adventure. So this is Jess's car that we've loaded to the to the max with all our gear. Should be a good laugh. The boats are fully loaded and we're about to set off. It looks quite shallow, so it's gonna be interesting. Let's see how we go. I, I, I was expecting that actually, yeah. See you later. Bye. Let me know when you get to your dad's, okay? All right. See you later, boy. Bye bye. No. Oh. Bye. We're going. Bye. more than five minutes or four minutes and we've come to a obstacle can you get through there yeah sweet uh, i think it's more about further ahead is what it is mate uh left hand left hand bit round there can you get around Sweet. Oh, there are more. It's all part of the adventure. Yeah, but it is. You probably saw it from the footpath. So we've come to another obstacle and this time we're going to have to get out. Go on Dan, you get out first. Oh, that's how it's done. Oh. Really surprised is how narrow and um, unnavigable to buckle. I still can't say that word. Navigable. Navigable. Okay, my aim for the end of this trip is to say the word navigable. But um, yeah, so many trees down. It's lovely though. It's beautiful. <laughs> <laughs> First discovery on the journey. Yeah, we're gonna play a bit of ball. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> God, that's heavy. That's like I said, it's like a shotgun. Oh, it's a medicine ball, isn't it? Yeah, it's a healthy ball. <laughs> that's it. I'm really in. Ah. 
So we've come up now to a old roundhouse and I can't remember any information about it, but I'm pretty sure it's old. So we've been paddling now for 10 and a half miles and for three hours, 25 minutes and it's 12 o'clock. So we're just heading into Lechlade now. So we've stopped off at the local pub in Lechlade for a quick pint and a rest. The sun's coming out and there's a random festival over there. You can see all those bell tents. So, might check that out later. Go and watch a few acts. See how it goes. We're at Grafton Lock now. I think it's the third lock we've gone through, isn't it? Yeah. Let's go. Thank you very much. See you later. No going back now. <laughs> Go, keep going, keep going, because I can't stop. Back pedal hard, back pedal hard. Oh, I can't stop. <laughs> Such good fun. <laughs> so we woke up in the morning with fucking rain. We've had to <laughs> quickly jump out and chuck a tarp over all of our sleeping bags and stuff. It's five o'clock in the morning. Right, so about to set off for the second day. We're going to probably hit hopefully over 20 miles again today. Maybe a bit more if we feel up to it. Uh, it's quite a nice calm still morning so let's see what today's fun has in store
One of many pillboxes down the River Thames. Probably the 20th one we've passed so far. Lovely old bridge, Saxon design. Here now at Northmore Lock, and Dan is operating the lock as you can see. What we're having to do is tie a line to uh, the other person's kayak and then drag it through. A bit of a ball ache, but um, just uh, one of those things. Give us a bit of a break. Captain oh. Dan <laughs> at the Ferryman Inn now, enjoying a nice pint. Cheers. I've gone 13 miles so far. It's been quite fast. Just the locks are a bit of a nightmare, but you know, it's what it is. We're going to carry on for another 10 miles probably and camp somewhere before we hit Oxford. And then the next day we're going to find our way through the, uh, the maze that is Oxford. Back to episode two. So we've kayaked down just over 15 miles from where we last camped and we've found the most perfect place to, uh, to camp for the night. So you can see someone's had a fire here, but what we're going to do is down through this little track down here. We've got a perfect spot to put our tent. So we can have a tent back on here, then we'll put a couple of hammocks from, from there to there. And uh, yeah, we can have a campfire as well. I'm really excited for this, this camping spot. Perfect. So here's our wild camp for the night. Got a Polish Lavu. I've set it up with a top rock, top line, a bit of bungee connected to that branch there. And we've got a couple of hammocks set up. All our food and messy carrier bags are there. So yeah, pretty good setup I think morning and Dan's cooking us up some porridge. Last night we slept in the hammocks, we didn't even sleep in the tent, there's no point even having it up. Oh, I suppose if it rained we could have darted in there. Look how much room you get in there. Oh, that scary noise. Let's go and check out the river. Nice clean morning. Socks dry? Yeah, no. Yes, Check out those clouds over there. I'm just going to chuck it down today. The weather report says that uh, from six o'clock tonight it's going to be torrential. So. And that's the direction we're heading, heading towards Oxford, and it backs around Oxford and goes back into that. So we're here at the head of the river pub in Oxford, and tucking down to a fish and chip. Now look how good that looks. crack in. Anyway, catch you up in a bit. So 
so there's the King's Arms and my grandma used to live here in Radley and we used to go to that pub and we used to come and visit her. Got some really fun memories. Thank you. find a place to camp for the night now and we're a little ways up from Abingdon and there's this, it's this really cool bit of backwater well, it's in bind, um, Japanese knotweed there over there look at that old tree that's fallen down ash dieback there's a big stately home over there so we've got to be quite secluded tonight but we'll go around the corner and have a look so here's our camp for the night It's a simple tarp set up, raised to overlook the river. Might have a little campfire. Some people have had a fire here before and left a bit of wood. I'm definitely having a campfire tonight. Yeah, you up for a fire, are you? 100% tonight. We're just exploring this island and it turns out that it, this is the island where Lewis Carroll, the author of Alice in Wonderland, got his inspiration. And you can just see why it's just like from another world. There's a little bridge here. Over there, there's a abandoned cottage. You see the brickwork. You'll probably see it better from the other side. We're going to get through this dodgy bridge now. Let's go and see what's around. Great little camping area around here. It's really weird um, gravel. You can see through the trees, you can see that great big manor house. Oh, and there's a house right there. <laughs> so it's day four, we've packed up the camp. Had a nice fire last night. And we're gonna go down past Abingdon towards Wallingford and over there is the abandoned cottage in the woods. Yeah. Can't park there mate. So we're just coming into Abingdon now. Beautiful little riverside town. Famous for its council estates and crime. Haven't been here for a while. I think you can see the prison from the river at some point. But we'll go around the corner and have a look. Prison over there. So this is coming into Shillingford now. Right, tell them where we are, Dan. So we're in Benson, we're at the Waterfront Side Cafe. Literally couldn't have timed it any better. Been out in the boiling sun all day, got really hot, really sweaty, wearing too many layers, and then got here for a quick coffee and a bacon and egg sandwich, and then just started chucking it down. So we're just gonna let the weather die down, and then we're gonna move on to Wallingford, maybe uh, look for a place to camp, maybe stop off have a drink or something like that at the old boathouse. The pillbox of the, of the stretch goes to this beauty. It has a lovely mural of three soldiers, or the home guard possibly, and a spitfire on the right hand side. And poppies. Very good, very nice. 
Rainbow! Yeah! So we've just set up the tent. A little Polish Lavu. And this is what we're looking at tonight for our evening view. This beautiful sun setting. Just a quiet little valley. Got some some meat on the, on the gas stove. Kicking away nicely. I'm just going to enjoy the rest of the evening. So it's day five. We're setting off just north of Goring, heading through Reading today, um, hoping to get to Henley. So going into more familiar territory, aren't we, Dan? Yeah, that's right. More familiar territory. Henley, Sonning, go through Pangbourne. Hambledon, Hurley, it's all familiar. So we're now paddling past Goring towards Pangbourne and the sun's out. I've got my shirt off trying to get rid of this awful t-shirt tan. And this is a great little valley we're paddling through. Really picturesque, let me show you. girl over there. So heading into Cavisham now. This is Cavisham Bridge and it's the worst place along the Thames. Check out this old boat. So we've just stopped off for a lovely beer, the Copper Club in, in uh, Sonning. And we're going to head down St. Patrick's Stream now, which is a bit of a backwater. Um, you've probably seen it in my other videos if you've actually watched any of them. Um, and that will bypass Shipfleet Lock. And then we're going to go and have a drink with Dan's uh, parents at the Georgian Dragon. So yeah, good day so far. The house over there is owned by Yuri Geller, uh, the famous spoon bender. Or as Dan likes to say, the famous bender. So we're heading down St. Patrick's Stream now. A bit of a bypass. Oh, you're right. Yeah, it's this bit. So you can see there's a small tree down at the, at the top. So you want to get to this side. Slow yourself down. And then forward. See, I almost hit it then. And then... Oh, careful. <laughs> so, this is the end of St. Patrick's Stream from the Loddon down, bypassing Shipbait Lock. 
It's a good little shortcut. Really beautiful, probably if more beautiful than the uh, from Cricklade down to Lechlade. Really fast flowing. I mean, we did that in less than half an hour. Canal. That's the, that's the whole like side of the island taken out. Oh, there's a giant boat behind us now, be careful. So we've just had a lovely meal in the Georgian Dragon pub, paid for by Dan's folks. Top quality nosh. And we're just paddling down the river now to Henley, which is my hometown. Um, there's a hot air balloon in the sky. Perfect day, really. There they are. <laughs> End of the day, boys. Job done. Another twenty six miles in the town. So, just arrived outside Henley. And we're trying to find a place to camp tonight so we can <laughs> stash the boats sneakily uh, behind the pretend rowing club. Um, fingers crossed we can get away with it. <laughs> so last night we spent we slept in this, an old shelter that I built a few years ago. In the woods above Henley. We need to get the boats now, it's hopefully that they haven't been stolen. Russell Brown's house over there. We're in Bisham now. It's a lovely town, famous for its abbey. Next up is Marlow. Really need a crab, really need a crab. We've made it to Marlow. A famous riverside historic town, like every town along the river. It's got a bridge, it's got a nice church. A few, uh, few things to say. Oh, we've got, we've got a boat fucking up our ass. Oh. You want to say a few things? Marlow Regatta, which is what it's known for. And we all know Regatta Town's always brought in lots of tourism back in the day um, and that's why they're still popular to this day now oh, oh, oh no yes make sure you take your sunglasses off <laughs> Well, I'm gonna stop filming now. <laughs> oh, I'm getting great footage, Dan. Getting great footage. 
No, I'm saying with you in the background. Why is it on bloody underwater mode? So we've just had a few beers and drinks at the ferry and we're thinking about camping on one of these islands just over here. Um, it's about five or six o'clock now and we're thinking it's not really worth pushing on much further it's nine o'clock yeah. no we've been going for nine hours oh. <laughs> averaging out one and a half miles an hour <laughs> so yeah we're thinking about camping on one of these islands over here and um yeah doing a bit of a long slog tomorrow so let's see where we end up So we ended up in Marlow, we're right by the weir at Bolter's Lock and there's a river that cuts off from the main Thames called the Jubilee River and that's what you're seeing there, that's the very start of it. So we paddled along there, there are um, danger weir signs blocking off the way with ropes so we've managed to get underneath them and find this nice little camping spot. So we've just put a hammock up at the minute, got the boats over there. We're going to cook up some food and have a few morettis. Morning, it's day seven and we've camped along the Jubilee River, the Queen's Jubilee. Um, it's going to be our last full day paddle today. Hopefully we'll get collected tomorrow morning from wherever we end up. So we're just going to try and make the most of it. We're going to go to the uh, Blue River Cafe now and have something to eat. And then yeah, carry on the day. So tune in. Stay involved. This is Maidenhead, Maidenhead Bridge. So this is the Royal Barge. Coming into Windsor, you can see the castle there. Very little battery now, so it's gonna be quick. We're in Runnymede now, famous for the signing of the Magna Carta. Very boring part of the stretch, really. Uh, now down to 3%, coming to the end of our trip now. So I might have to switch to my phone. Anything else that happens, I'll fill you in. Final camp here on Ham Island. Pretty lucky we found this spot. Here she comes. Here she comes. So we've come to the end of the trip. Jess is here now to pick pick us up. And yeah, it's been a good fun. Can't wait to have a shower. And uh, thanks for watching. When the weather is fine, then you know it's a sign for messing about on the river. If you take my advice, there's nothing so nice as messing about on the river. There are long boats and short boats and all sorts of craft. 
and cruisers and keelboats and some with no draft. So take off your coat and hop in a boat, go messing about in the river. There are boats made from kits that reach you in bits for messing about in the river. Or you might like to scowl in a glass fiber hull just messing about in the river. There are tillers and rudders and anchors and cleats and ropes that are sometimes referred to as sheets. With the wind in your face, there's no finer place than messing. 